Now the couch gag is a staple of the show and is probably as iconic as the Simpsons family themselves and since 1990 there have been hundreds of them ranging in style, length and theme. Wow. And there's been some development as we go from this to this. I thought it would be fun to take a look back at some of the best, longest, darkest couch gags throughout Simpsons history, selecting the most defining moments that I feel are worth noting. So rush over to your sofa in style and let's get started. Right, okay, in order to understand the couch gag, we need to go back to where it all began. You may be surprised to know that in the very first episode, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire didn't actually open with, well, an opening sequence. However, Groening later integrated the idea of the intro as he felt that having a longer opening would result in less animation, cost and time. It wasn't until the second episode, Bart the Genius, where we got our first couch gag. And when the Simpsons family sit down for the very first time, Bart is squeezed right off the couch and pops into the air. The intended original couch gag was simply going to show the family rushing over to sit down, with nothing actually happening, but this was instead pushed to the seventh episode. From there, couch gags were usually brief and only lasted a few short seconds, but in season four, we got the first elongated couch gag called Circus Line. This has since been used about a dozen times in other episodes, as it was almost used to make up for shorter episodes. Jumping forward to when the show switched to the notorious HD era in season 20, we got the chasing couch gag, the first opening sequence to be in, you guessed it, HD. In this particular one, we observe the Simpsons following the couch around the world until they finally catch up with it in space. With the updated HD opener, there were a few new additions, such as the three-eyed crow, Kearney and Jimbo soaring off Jebediah's head, the billboard gag, sleeping Barney, and Maggie's price going up on the cash register, apparently to coincide with the cost of having a child in the US. Now, it's shown that couch gags are non-canon and have no bearing on the episode that follows them, which allows them to be as creative as they want. This means that the family can get stamped on, <coughs> turned into frogs, zombies, sea monkeys, bubbles, and even cookies, and they still rock up looking as healthy and yellow as ever. They can also interact with other characters from other franchises who they wouldn't ordinarily meet unless it's a crossover special, like the Flintstones, Bob's Burgers, Wile E. Coyote, Freddy and Jason, and of course, Thanos. The couch gags also carry the freedom to parody other shows and movies in an almost celebratory ode to pop culture. A way in which this has been done was when The Simpsons were shown to be on an adventure through Middle Earth and to come across Mo Gollum alongside Carl, Lenny and Barney who play three trolls. And of course, in true Burns style, we see Burns Smaug protecting his pile of gold. On a similar fantasy theme, there was the Game of Thrones opening that faithfully created the iconic HBO show where Springfield was positioned as a giant clockwork mechanism. In the Avatar sequence, the Simpsons family lie down in tanks and their minds are transported into Na'vi bodies. Bart tames their couch and flies it to a mountain so they can watch TV in 3D. They also parody Breaking Bad, with Marge making crystal blue cupcakes to sell at a bake sale until we zoom out to reveal that Walter and Jesse are watching the show. There's also an Adventure Time opening with Lisa as Marceline, Maggie as Princess Bubblegum, and Santa's little helper as Lady Rainicorn, and Mr. Burns is the Ice King. It's safe to say that there's no boundary of what they may parody next. They've done Downton Abbey and Frozen. Hi, Caramba! Disney alumni Eric Goldberg, director of Pocahontas and Fantasia 2000, guest animated an incredible Disney couch gag in season 27. The couch gag shows the eras and evolution of the Disney movies. I think personally this was such a cool representation of the development of animation, poignant within Disney and a classic show like The Simpsons, which has had some stylistic changes throughout the years which you can see simply by comparing Snow White to someone like Elsa and 1989 Homer to, well, 2020 Homer. 
there have been some changes. Speaking of guest animators, in recent years, The Simpsons have been bringing outside talent to craft their own couch gags. Several artists and filmmakers have lent their skills to the Yellow family, resulting in some pretty insane results. Stupid Buddy Studios, creators of Robot Chicken, crafted an entire sequence using the World of Springfield toy figures. The crew of Robot Chicken actually bumped into Matt Groening at the Yemi Awards, where they discussed making a couch gag for the show, and in typical Robot Chicken fashion, things got crazy. Homer has a rocket-powered fist, which he uses to knock out Flanders off the roof, and then morphs into a giant donut before mowing down Agnes, Martin, and Mr. Burns. Homer and Otto then have a race before the bus plows off of a cliff and explodes. Then the family is strapped to the couch and are forced to watch their own show. It's pretty awesome seeing the characters in toy form and how far they went to recreate Springfield. I think personally it'll be pretty interesting to see this as an entire episode in this style. Robot Chicken returns to make the missing sailboat couch gag in 2017. In it, Homer goes on a hunt for Marge's missing boat painting. In a fourth wall breaking moment, Homer leaves his set and travels through a South Park style show and the California raisins who he accidentally kills before meeting the geek from Robot Chicken. Who has the painting? Which is a pretty interesting idea seeing as how long that simple boat painting has been under our very noses for the last 30 years or so. Another insane crossover was in the season 26 episode when the Simpsons finally met Rick and Morty. Which was unfortunate for the family as Rick's ship crashes into Evergreen Terrace and squashes them completely. God, look at the baby one! Oh my god, Morty! Rick then sends Morty to get their DNA cloned, leaving Rick to drink Dove and try on Marge's pearls. The Simpsons are cloned, but they are transformed into hideous hybrid versions of Rick. At the end, Bart breaks the fourth wall and he demands, No more guest animators, man! Well, the little dude didn't get what he wanted, as there's been a few more since then. Now, one of my personal favourite guest animators was Bill Plimpton, who has created six different couch gags, and there's no secret why. His first in season 23 starts off with showing Homer having a deep romantic connection with, well, his couch. But who can blame him? Take a look at those cushions. Oh yeah. But it soon takes a dark turn when he meets Marge and the couch is cast off. Also cast off is their baby. So a single couch has to do what it can, resorting to stripping and prostitution. Homeless and depressed, it flings itself into the jaws of a dumpster truck. But before its life ends, Homer fishes it out and takes both of them home. And although this is supposed to be a happy ending, the couch gag now has to spend its entire life as a seat for its former lover and his new blue haired wife. So a little sad, no wonder it tried to scarper off all over the world. And who says these aren't canon? Plimpton has since added to his repertoire and has created some fun and surreal couch gag sequences with each one being vastly different from the other, in style and in story. My personal favourite has to be his latest one, which is a hand-drawn animation of Homer singing Your Face. This is an excellent recreation of his Oscar winning short film of the same name and it's so beautifully made and Homer really does have a lovely singing voice which makes the whole thing really quite touching. I love it when couch gags get really abstract and creative. In Homer Brain, created by Polish animator Michael Soka, we journey into Homer's mind. The piece was inspired by Soka's own short film Chick and uses the same three colours, red, white and black. For something that reimagines Homer's innards, it's really quite beautiful. And then there's the Don Hertzfeld couch gag in season 26. Homer uses a time travelling TV remote to see what the show will be like in the future. Homer is now an octopus like alien and only says, do, do, do. And it only gets weirder from there. It's so bizarre in all the best ways. One of the darkest introductions comes from British graffiti artist Banksy. In it, we see an Asian sweatshop where the tired workers are painting animation cells before they are dipped in chemicals by a barefooted child. We then pan down to see a pile of bones and kittens being thrown into a wood chipper to provide stuffing for Bart dolls. 
before we zoom out to reveal a really gritty and grimy version of the 20th Century Fox logo. Many people saw this as Banksy's statement of the harsh reality of The Simpsons production, as they do in fact outsource parts of their production to South Korea. But producer Al Jean said that this was very fanciful and far-fetched, where none of the things he depicts are true. That statement should be self-evident, but I will emphatically state it. BBC News reported that according to Banksy, his storyboard led to delays, disputes over broadcast standards, and that there were threats of walkouts by the animation department. However, Al Jean disputed this by saying, the animation department didn't walk out. Obviously they didn't. We've depicted their conditions in a fanciful light before. And to the producers and the studio's credit, the final sequence is very close to Banksy's original storyboard, so I admire them for poking fun at themselves or even pushing their franchise into the same controversies many companies have been accused of. A ballsy move, and I give credit to them for being unafraid of getting darker, gritty, and a tad more serious. Elevating the couch gag from simply being a funny way to sit on your sofa to, well, you know, something a bit more controversial. And while on the subject of dark and maybe a bit more fun openings, the Treehouse of Horror specials have always had some gruesomely fun couch gags. And who better to create perhaps the best Treehouse of Horror opener than the king of the gothic, sublime and fantasy, Guillermo del Toro. His 2 minute and 40 second couch gag is laden with not only references to his own films like Hellboy Blade in Pan's Labyrinth, but other horror icons too, like the Universal Monsters, The Shining and Alfred Hitchcock. When asked about the process, Del Toro said, I really wanted to land the connections between the show set pieces and some of the most iconic horror movies. And he definitely achieved that. There are so many references in this couch gag that you'll need to keep pausing the screen in order to catch all of them. I know I did. This gothic inspired sequence is a love letter to horror and fantasy. Another darker couch gag appears in the season 28's Dad Behaviour. The opening starts off innocently enough, but when he skateboards out of the school, he lands on Barney, and the drunkard snaps Bart's board in half. We then cut to Homer who chokes on a rod, Lisa trips and breaks her neck, and Maggie drives the car into a lake, killing herself and Marge. Bart then places their photos on the couch gag next to them, memorialising the family. And aside from the Treehouse of Horror openings, this has the highest body count of any couch gag, so we couldn't miss out this bad boy. Moving away from the dark and gritty, let's take a look at some more fun couch gags. The LAZ Rider couch gag is one of the most stylish ones ever. Animated by Steve Cutts, it pays homage to 80s action Hollywood. Homer is a shade wearing badass, and Neddy is a cigar chewing villain. With Push It to the Limit pumping in the background, it's soaked in 80s pink vapour, taking inspiration from Scarface, Knight Rider, and Miami Vice. So much so, it really makes me want to go and play GTA Vice City. Another notable intro is from Homer's Evolution, which sees him evolve from a single-celled organism to a 21st century man. The transitions slowly and beautifully show the evolution from fish to lizard, monkey to ape. A funny moment is when he crosses paths with Mo, who is actually evolving in the opposite direction. In 2020, we got the stylish intro called The Extreme Sons which show the family partaking in extreme sports. Homer is skydiving, Bart snowboarding, and Lisa is diving with whales. We then cut to the Simpsons in the living room wearing VR headsets. This is, of course, a reference to the lockdown or lockdowns of 2020 and how we are to stay at home. The VR goggles allows the Simpsons to escape the confines of their own house. All right for some, eh? I wish I had a pair of VR goggles to escape my own reality, even for a quick second. A very rare Simpsons couch gag that originally aired in the season 17 episode has live actors playing the roles instead. The entire intro is an almost shot by shot remake. It's been recreated perfectly from the chalkboard gag, Lisa Sachs and the Marge actress even looks a bit like Julie Kavner. But for some reason, this live action couch gag was replaced in reruns, as well as on Disney Plus, and it hasn't been used since then, which is a shame really, I'd love to see them bring it back again. There have been so many couch gags throughout the 30 plus years of The Simpsons, so there is absolutely no way that I could talk about every one of them. But if you feel like I've missed out a truly monumental one, then please shout at me in the comments. 
I want to know what your favourite couch gags are and any ideas of any future couch gags that you have of your own. I would like to end this video by saying a huge thank you to my newest Flying Hellfish members, Ashley Brown and Kevin Marino. You join an awesome group of people that includes Timothy, who else but Zane, Liam, Pingu, Tommy, Steve, Charlie, Sean, Justin, Andre, Stefan, Jake, Josh, David, Nicholas, Vincent, Robert, Ashley, Kevin and Rob Turner. Thank you very much for watching and smell you later.